Okay, so this is 6.1, Rational Functions. Um, first, I want to talk about how to find vertical asymptotes. So VA is what we use to abbreviate vertical asymptotes. Number one, simplify. If you don't know what you're doing, at least try to simplify. What do I mean by that? I'm looking for you to factor, okay? So if you can factor it in any way, try to factor it, all right? If you can factor it, then maybe something will cancel and that will simplify it. Now, the second step, number two, set the denominator equal to zero. After you simplify, then you set the denominator equal to zero. And once you do that, the third step is solve for x. When you solve for x, you'll have an equation, x equals something, and whatever it is, that's your vertical asymptote, okay? So for this first one here, f of x, I factor the numerator, I simplify, look, it's already five times x, I can't do anything with the denominator, it's x minus one, can't do anything, I can't cancel out anything there. So it's simplified as much as possible. Step two says set the denominator equal to zero. So I set it equal to zero and I solve for x. I add one to both sides. And when I add one to both sides, I get x equals one, okay? So when x equals one, that's a vertical asymptote for that function there. Now, if you were asked to find a second point on the graph, maybe you can try plugging in. If I plug in zero, what do I get? Okay, I wanna get identified two ordered pairs that are on the graph. How do I do that? I just pick x values. So I'm gonna pick x equal to zero, plug in here. And so what do I get? Five times zero over zero minus one. 5 times 0 is 0 over 0 minus 1. Type this in your calculator. Guess what? You're going to get 0. So what's a point? 0 comma 0. That's a point. All right. Another point that you could plug in. What if we plugged in x equal to 1? I mean, I have an x equal to 1 there. Why not plug it in here? Well, let's see what happens. When I plug it in, I get 5 times 1 over 1 minus 1. So it's 5 over 0. Uh-oh, this does not exist, okay? Why does it not exist? There's a vertical asymptote there. So don't plug in a point that's that same number here that we use for our vertical asymptote. Come on now. So this is a point, we need one more point. Okay, one more point will get us the answer for uh, identify two ordered pairs. So just pick another x value, that's fine. Uh, x equal to two will work. Okay, so if x equals 2, I get 5 times 2 over 2 minus 1. That's 10 over 1, which is 10. So what does that tell me? Another ordered pair is 2 comma 10. So there's two ordered pairs. That's what, you're, that's what they're asking for when they say find, uh, identify two ordered pairs. Let's try this next problem here. G of x. Okay. Factor the numerator, it's factored as much as possible. But what about the denominator here? That's two terms. When I think two ter terms, I gotta think difference of squares. Difference of squares is, I take the square root of this first part, square root of x squared is x. Okay, and then I take the square root of that second part, square root of nine is three. So I have an x plus three and an x minus three, all right? And then the numerator, it's just x plus 2. Does anything cancel here? The x plus 2, that's not going to cancel with either one of those factors, okay? So this is simplified as possible. Now, what does step 2 tell me to do? Set the denominator equal to 0. So I have x plus 3 times x minus 3 equals 0. So x plus 3 equal to 0 and x minus 3 equal to 0. If I add three on both sides, what do I get? I'm sorry, 
Adding three is not gonna get rid of the three. The opposite of adding three is subtracting three. And so that's gonna get me what x equals negative three here. What about over here? I add three to get rid of the negative three and I get positive three there. So these are my vertical asymptotes here, all right? And if you wanted to find another point, you just pick a number and plug it in, okay? You pick a number and plug it in. So maybe like, I don't know, G of, I'm just gonna do one of them here. So G of two. If I plug in two, I get two plus two over two squared minus nine. So two plus two is four. Now two times two, that's two squared, that's four minus nine. Four minus nine gets me what, negative, um, negative five, is that right? Okay. So that's gonna be two comma negative four over five, right there. All right, I'll leave you to do another one. Just pick an X value that's not negative three and not three. Okay, so maybe g of 1, all right? So maybe try to calculate g of 1. Okay, this last one here. Now the numerator looks like it could potentially factor. Why? It's a trinomial. Let's try t chart. I want it to multiply to negative 15. Okay, looking at this number here. And I want it to add to negative 2. So if I multiply 5 and 3... Okay, that's a positive 15, so if I make one of them negative, so negative 5 plus 3, is that negative 2? Yeah. Okay, and since the term in front here is a 1, what does that tell me? That's my shortcut, right? So that tells me that this factors to x minus 5 and x plus 3. That's in the numerator. The denominator is just x minus 5. Okay, so what can I do now? I can cancel the x minus 5 factors. And what am I left with? I'm left with just x plus 3. As long as the factors that I canceled are not equal to 0. Okay, so what does that mean? As long as x minus 5 does not equal 0, I'm good to go. That's my equation. So... So what does that mean? If I plus five to both sides, I get x is not equal to five. So as long as x does not equal five. So here's your trick, guys and gals. If you're going to simplify, okay, if you're going to simplify here, then you need to be careful about the factors that you cancel, all right? What's happening technically here is you're creating holes in your graph, okay? You're creating holes where you cancel. Because if x was equal to 5, you get a 0 here and a 0 here. And 0 times some number is 0, so really you're getting a 0 divided by 0. Guess what? 0 divided by 0 is just as bad as a number divided by 0. We don't divide by zero no matter what. That's indeterminate. We don't know what that actual number is, okay? It's, it's undefined. So when I look at this answer here, are there any vertical asymptotes? Well, this is just a line, okay, passing through y-intercept 3, going up with a positive slope 1. But the deal is, at x equal to 5... At x equal to 5, there's no value. So what does that mean? There's a hole in the graph right there. So how do you represent it? You just put a little circle, okay, right up there where the hole is. So it's like I take a little hole punch and just go, whoop, bam, and knock the hole out of that line right there, okay? All right, so there's no vertical asymptote um let's say 
for h of x. Okay. All right. Finding order pairs is still works the same way. I just take h and I plug in a number. Maybe if I plugged in one, that's one plus three, which is four. So a point is one comma four. So no big deal, hopefully for you to find ordered pairs. All right. What about horizontal asymptotes? This is goofy, but this is a good way to help you remember. To get a horizontal asymptote, HA, okay? Now, HA, HA stands for horizontal asymptote. Horizontal asymptotes are of the form Y equals some number, right? So how do I remember this? I just think, hey, right? So hey, the Y equals a number here. This is what I'm looking for, all right? Now, Bobo Botten eats DC. Bo stands for bigger on, and then Bo, bottom. The O here is, for, this last one is for Y equals zero. Horizontal asymptote, Y equal to zero, okay? Botten, botten stands for bigger on top. There's no horizontal asymptote. And then each DC, each DC, Exponents are the same, divide coefficients. Now, what am I talking about here? Bigger on bottom, bigger on top. What's going on? We're looking at the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. So it's all coming back to you. What's the degree of this term? There's one x value, but one variable. So the degree is one. Now, the degree of the denominator is also degree one. So when I look at those, those degrees are the same. When they're the same, I divide coefficients. What's the coefficient of the first one? It's a uh, 5, and then the denominator is understood to be a 1. So the horizontal asymptote, hey, y equals what? 5 over 1. So that tells me the horizontal asymptote is y equals 5. Okay? Okay. For the next one, the next one, I look at the degree. The degree of the numerator is a degree one. Okay, the degree of the denominator, I look at the largest uh, degree term is degree two. Okay. So, what does that tell me? I'm actually going to be bigger on bottom bigger on bottom tells me what bigger on bottom is bobo which is horizontal asymptote y equal to zero okay if you think about it just for a second if the denominator is the big strong one that means at the race to infinity so as x goes really far to the right, it gets really big. Okay, you think about it on a graph. We're going to the right, really far, okay? So as x gets big, what's happening to this ratio here? Well, the bottom is stronger. If a bottom is stronger than the top, it's pulling it closer and closer to the horizontal line y equal to zero. That's the idea of a horizontal asymptote, okay? If I have a number over a really big number, okay, so maybe like two over, you know, a thousand, this number is like 0. 0.0002, right? Or maybe just two, uh, I don't know, whatever. I think it's, let's see, one, two, three, yeah. So that's a pretty small number, two thousandths, okay? It's, it's pretty, pretty tiny, right? So um, this thing is basically going to zero. That's what we're saying here. All right, the last one, the last one, the numerator degree, this is a degree two. The denominator degree is degree one. 
were Bo Botten, bigger on top. What does bigger on top mean? That there's no HA. Okay, bigger on top means that there's no HA. Now, technically, there is an asymptote, and it's something we haven't talked about, but I'm going to talk about right now. There is a slant asymptote. Okay? A slant asymptote, I like to call it my essay. Okay, my essay happens when the top degree is exactly one greater than the bottom degree. Okay? So if this is the case, so degree two divided by degree one, so that's exactly what's going on here. That's one bigger than the denominator. So how do I find the slant asymptote? I've got to use division, okay? So to use division, I got to think back to synthetic division here. When I'm dividing Using synthetic division, I set what I'm dividing by equal to 0. So that's x minus 5 equals 0. So x is equal to 5. I box it up. 5 goes in my box, and I write my coefficients. 1, negative 2, and negative 15. So my coefficients right here. Okay. Draw my line. Drop down the 1. I get 5 times 1. Remember, multiply everything under the line by what's in the box. I get 5. Add 5 and negative 2. I get 3. And then multiply what's underneath by what's in the box, 15. And those cancel to get 0. Remember, this is your remainder. This is, I'm sorry. This is your remainder. This is your number. And this is your x. So this is x, 1x, plus 3. Okay, so what does that tell me? That tells me that the slant asymptote here is, see, my remainder was zero, right? No matter what your remainder is, even if your remainder is like five or 17 or whatever, the remainder goes away, okay? All we care about is this part right here, the quotient. And so the slant asymptote is going to be y equals that quotient. So my answer, slant asymptote, is y equals x plus 3. Now, why does the remainder go away? Well, think about if you did have a remainder here. If it was like a 17 or whatever, I'm just making a number up then what do you do with that remainder? You write it over what you divided by x minus 5, right? Well, what happens to this when we go to infinity? When the x gets really big, what happens? I have 17 over something that's really big minus 5. Now, if it's really, really big, you subtract 5 from a really, really, really big number. You got a million dollars and you take away 5 bucks. You know, it doesn't really matter. It's still a really big amount of money. So a number $17 over like a million dollars, who cares about $17, right? It's basically zero to a millionaire, okay? So that's why at infinity, when we get really big, the remainder doesn't really contribute much to my asymptote, okay? All right, guys. Hopefully that helps out.